from Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, the poker capital of the world. Welcome to the 2002 World Series of Poker. The winner of today's event will walk away with a record $2 million in cash. More than 600 players from around the world battled for four days. Now, only nine remain, and here they come. From Vietnam, Tony Duong. Julian Gardner from England. Scott Gray from Ireland. Russian-born Ralph Perry, Min Lee from Vietnam, oh, Brooklyn's man. Robert Varconi, John Shipley from England, Russell Rosenblum from New York, and Californian Harley Hall. Three American amateurs face six of the world's best professionals with millions of dollars at stake. Gabe? Ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at six million dollars in cash. This is more money than most people see in five lifetimes. Except Bill Gates, he probably finds this in his sofa cushions. At the end of the day today, one of these nine players will be $2 million richer. That's the player who comes in in first place. The player who comes in in ninth place will be $85,000 richer. That's a difference of $1,915,000 between first place and ninth place. This is the World Series of Poker, the 33rd annual World Series of Poker. This might be the biggest cash event in history. We're going to start it off. Our dealer is Don Joe Kennedy. He's a new dealer. Don, how long have you been dealing? 52 years. 52 years. To start things off, we have the grandson and namesake of the man who started this tournament, Benny Binion. His name is Benny Binion Bainan, and he's going to start it off. Benny, let's get going. John Joe, shuffle up and deal. Six million dollars, nine players. John Shipley starts with more than two million dollars in chips, but can he keep them? His first time here at the final, anything can happen. Okay, we are down now to the final table. The final nine players from 631 entrants. None of these guys, though, Gabe, have ever been to the final table here before. What are they feeling? Well, I'll tell you one thing. They didn't sleep too good last night, and they come down here this morning, and... Uh, you see the lights, the cameras, uh, all the people. Plus, there's six million dollars staring at them, sitting right on that right table over there. Yeah, you know, it's got to be kind of unnerving. Suppose on the final day of the Masters tournament, before the leader hit his final shot, they went out there and dumped a million dollars on the fairway. <laughs> That's gonna uh, call okay, for an extra read or two down. on that green. I tell you, two Americans right there. Russ Rosenblum taking a peek over at Robert Barconia's smirk. What are we doing here with all these pros? One thing you are going to see, speaking of sneaks, a sneak peek at the players' hole cards. We're going to get inside look into their brain and what they're thinking. Yeah, when it gets heads up, we're going to see what the players have so we can see how they play their cards. And as we see right over here, Robert Barconi has a pair of nines. Not bad. Not and that's bad. what he's raised $50,000 on. And now mm -hmm. Julian Garner <laughs> oh, can you believe it? up with a pair of aces in the first oh, hand of the final day of the World Series of so Poker. And how is he going to play this? Well, he's not going to raise all his chips. No, he'll call for sure. We know that. <laughs> oh, well, you know he's going to call. Uh, but we don't know if he's going to. He's probably going to raise, he's counting out, I think, about 100, 150000 and make sure Robert does not go he's out. Raised he's 100 raised 150000 150, Robert's thinking about it. All in. And oh, Robert says well, he's all in. All Robert in. is oh, hoping his nines hold up. <laughs> and now the world knows what he's got. Serious trouble. Serious trouble, yeah. And you saw that little smirk. I, th I think he thought he might have had an edge with those two nines, but now he needs a third nine probably to take this hand. Well, if um, if Julian didn't have an overpair, tens to aces, then Robert would be in pretty good shape, but he's in terrible shape. Now he's actually about a four and a half to one underdog. Here's the flop. Ten, six, two. Uh, deuce, ten, six. He could win with a nine or a seven and an eight. Would make him a straight. Turn card is another, another deuce, deuce, and now he's dead to that nine. Here, the only way Robert could win is with a nine. nine and right now, and yeah. England has just scored a goal in the finals of the World Cup. <laughs> Watch out for the poker hooligans in the crowd here. Robert Barconi is stunned. He had $640,000 in chips when we started this hand. He is now down to two fifty. a serious blow to his chances. Right, this is, uh, this is Survivor with cards, Juan. Uh, someone's going to stay on the island and someone's going to leave very soon. So now they're going to count out the chips. Actually, Robert Barconi wants to know send exactly us, send us how many chips we'll match up. Julian put in. 
and that is how much his stack will diminish. At 23, Julian Gardner has a chance to replace Phil Hellmuth as the youngest player ever to win this World Series. I asked him if that was a goal. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I know that it's my dream to not to win the $2 million, but to win this tournament. And uh, that's the most important thing for me, you know. The 33rd Annual World Series of Poker is brought to you with pride by Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, where millions are played and legends are made. Play as each receive two cards face down. Then share five community cards in between rounds of betting. The best five out of seven cards win. As the deal moves around the table, two players are forced to put up money before seeing their hand. These are called blinds and they speed up the game. With no limits on betting, players can lose their whole stack in any single moment. This is John Shipley's championship to lose. You look at his stack, he's got a two to one chip lead, plenty of weaker players to roll over, but this is the World Series, nothing is for sure. Julian, As we begin hand number two, while, Julian Gardner play playing with a little more confidence, a little first, more clout. The <laughs> antis are $3,000, the blinds at eight and 16000 Yes, and Julian Gardner from Manchester, England, England, across the Atlantic Sea. He's a very happy man right now. As we begin hand two, more action in hand one than I've ever seen at the World Series. Let's see what uh, hand two brings us. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Anybody got yeah. yeah. Well, this fella, Robert yeah. Marconi, he lost a lot of money. Russell gives it that look away flip. That's a patented move, by the way. Early Hall, not going to play. Tony D in the black hat, one of the favorites coming in. He's out, and here's the guy who won all that money in the first stand. And he's going to play this hand. going to look serious here. He's going to raise. Uh, he's calling a 16, and he's raising. It looks like about 25,000. And we see he's got a pair of nines. The hand that he beat in the first hand, he's woken up with a pair of nines on the button in the second hand. How can he play with it? I mean, it's a good hand, but it didn't work in the first hand. Yeah, but that's a very good hand, especially yeah. on the button. So he's, he's got to play with it. Now we see Ralph Perry. Mm -hmm. Ace King. He's, Ace. he's oh, got boy. Ace King. Now that's a very, very strong hand because uh, if an Ace or a King come out on the top, you... Uh, you have the top pair and the top kicker, and usually in a spot like this, a player at this level in the World Series of Poker would I'm probably put all his chips in, and we'll see what Ralph Perry's going to do. Well, we know he's going to call. Oh, yeah, he's going to call. The innocent-looking Englishman. Well, he doesn't know, really, what he wants. He doesn't know if he wants Ralph to raise, because you're not that comfortable with a pair of nines. Go after you Ralph Perry has all right, right, here he goes. He's putting all his chips in. And, and Julian's not even going to consider it. He's showing his hand and throwing it away. Earlier, I asked Ralph Perry about his strategy for the championship. Just poker to me. Uh, just play the game, enjoy it. It's just a game. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a great player. I, I use all the poker tools that are available to me. And I know how to use them. Joining us now is 1989 world champion Phil Helmut. Quite a star, huh, Phil? Three hands, we have seen more action than we have in the first hour. That's, that's exactly right, Gabe. It's unbelievable. Raising and re-raising and moving all in, it's craziness. Um, these guys have had some hands, but I believe some of the Europeans, Europeans like to raise and re-raise and put a lot of chips in. That's their style of play. A lot of the Americans are more conservative and of course, Tony D would be right there with him gambling a little bit if he had any chips. Right, and I think they realize that the difference between ninth and first place is so enormous, between two million and eighty-five thousand, that they don't want to come in ninth. They realize that they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to make a move real early in the tournament. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to lose their chips because the annies and the blinds are so high. Right. Okay, let's get everybody caught up. Of the nine players, only two left in the hand. Robert Barconi right there with the glasses and chip leader John Shipley, and Robert's going to raise. Robert makes a raise in the small blind, which uh, is a pretty good move. You'll find usually that if it comes around to the players who act late in the hand, that someone will try, and uh, there's a lot of money out there, and someone will make a move. We haven't seen Robert's cards yet, but uh, it's a good play, whatever he has. And there it is. There it is. He has a king. Well, he has a good hand. That's an excellent hand. He needs hand. it, too. Yeah. yeah. That's an excellent hand in the small blind. Uh, 
and John Shipley now has got to decide whether he's going to call him with a seven, eight of clubs, and he's looking at how many chips Robert has left, deciding what to do. Shipley looking am amazingly concerned at this point. Well, that's his attitude. He's a very stoic player, uh, and that's the way he plays. He calls. Hmm? So Robert Barconi has $165,000 left, and let's see what the flop is. Robert's looking for a king or a queen. Ah, and he got the king. He got the king. He's got a pair of kings with a queen kicker. Let's see what he does. I'll check. He checks. He's trying to chap John Shipley. And maybe live another day if he does lose. John Shipley bets. John Shipley puts them all in, and Robert immediately calls. They turn over the hand, so everyone sees that uh, Robert's got a pair of kings. John Shipley is a huge underdog in this hand. He actually has nothing right now. He would have to get a seven and an eight on the next one. Uh, Robert's feeling pretty comfortable right now. Well, those cards do come. Robert is out of this tournament. There's a nine. Well, now John Shipley can get that miracle he's talking about because he would win if a six comes out. That would make him a straight, and that would be a terrible beat for Robert Marconi. It's an eight. Oh. Close. Well, Robert on the cusp of leaving this tournament, but he will live to fight another hand. What about that 7-8 from John Shipley? Was that the right play? Well, betting at the end, it was a good aggressive move because if Robert hadn't flopped a pair, uh, and didn't have a pair in the pocket, he probably would have gone out and not invested his last uh, 165000 I would question John Shipley calling in the first place with the 7-8 of clubs, because that's the kind of hand you want to call with if you could win a lot of money with a little investment. And it's not the kind of hand you want to play in that position uh, to double up Robert Barconi's. We have nine players left. Uh, if Julian Gardner wins, he would be the youngest player to win, usurping your youngness. Win. How old were you when you won? I was 24 years old when I won. 24. Yeah. Julian's 23. You give him a chance? I do give him a chance, and more power to him. My hat's off to him for making the final table at age 23. When I look back at what I was like at age 24, I still can't believe I've won it. Now, what about Russell Rosenblum? He's up there with a million dollars. Do you know much about him? <laughs> well, Russell Rosenblum is an amateur player, and... Uh, and I think it's going to be very difficult for any amateur to come in here and win. We've had a lot of classic finishes with amateurs where they finish second or third, but it's very difficult for them to win. It's not like they've been imagining winning it for years. It's not like they put in the hours and the toil and the sweat, you know, and it's, it's going to be difficult for them. As well as Robert Barconi is another amateur player, and if Robert wins this tournament, I'll be very shocked. Um, might even, well, I'm not going to do that. What were you going to do, Phil? I was going to say, if Robert Varconi was going to win this thing, I'd shave my head. But uh, well, that might our, not come our, off so good. <laughs> well, your hair will come off real easy. <laughs> just the uh, little clippers, and we could just shave that head. <laughs> I mean, you, you want to make that statement? I'm sure everyone would love to see you. You know, it strengthens your hair, Phil. makes your hair stronger. Maybe I will say that. I'll say that for the camera. You've got it, Gabe. Okay, Phil Helmuth is going to shave Marconi his head. If Robert Barconi wins this tournament, I will shave my head today. So Phil Helmuth doesn't think that Robert Barconi has much of a chance, or Russell Rosenblum, but he's not going to shave his head if Russell Rosenblum wins. But if Robert <laughs> Barconi, well, you could shave other parts of your body if Russell Rosenblum wins. Okay, you're going to shave your head if Robert Barconi wins. Will you shave right after the tournament? Right after the tournament, I'll do it All for right. the camera. So we have something to look forward to. Phil Helmuth with that baldy look. <laughs> If Robert Bracconi wins, please. Welcome back to the 2002 World Series of Poker from Binion Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. Robert Bracconi has battled his way back from the brink of elimination again, but we haven't heard much from our Asian pros, Min and Tony, but I'm sure that's going to change. Hand number 28 now, the ante and blinds are the same. Still nine players left at the table in this World Series of Poker. Nobody eliminated yet. Well, we haven't really had uh, too much action since that bombastic beginning that we had. Tough, Everything's tough act to follow. <laughs> right. Now, Ralph in first position is waking up here with his ace-king that he had in that hand against Julian. And let's see what he does. He's going to raise, but let's see how much. 50. He makes it 50,000 to go. Ralph makes it 50,000. Minley is Min next Lee in has line. a pair of eights, so it's very and interesting. Uh, two raise. hands in first and second position. Min's going to raise with his pair of eights, which uh, he didn't have to raise, but he's decided to raise. He could have just called the 50,000 and say, see what came on the flop, but it looks like he's raised. raising 90,000. 90, 
decided to make a move. He's been quiet for the whole tournament. Robert's out. John is out. John is out. And if it comes a bar uh, back, a Russell wants his air time. <laughs> <laughs> he knows where the cameras are. Loves to keep the chatter alive. And if it comes back around to Ralph, uh, let's see what Ralph... This is a little different than the other situation because Julian had the pair of nines on the button and Min has raised him from an early position. So let's see if Ralph plays his ace-king the same way and goes all in, same as he did last time. He could open a Tiffany's outlet here in Vegas with the jewelry he's got. <laughs> I think he wins the bracelet. I don't know where he's going to put it. Maybe around his ankle. So he's very contemplative. Yes, this is a big decision here. Uh, Min has been quiet, and he knows that. He knows Min hasn't hasn't raised at all, and now he comes right on top of him uh, and and raises him ninety thousand. So I don't know if Ralph's is going to go all in like he did last time. He's just thinking about just that. You know, what what should I do here? And Min says. Uh, Throw it away. Let me tell. I'll, I'll Let take, me take I'll, it. <laughs> I'll take this pot with his pair eights right here. It is tough all when you get the same hand. Oh, he's he's going all in. I raise him all in. And now Min has a decision. Uh, pair eights is not really a kind of hand you want when when you raise somebody and they come back at you. I don't know what he's going to do. Oh, and Min, call. yeah, Min's going to jump at it. He's going to be happy when he sees that ace king. Yeah, he's happy now. Yeah, he is. He knows that he's a slight favorite, and Robert's going to need, uh, I mean, Ralph's going to need a ace or a king on the flop. Oh, got there's it. a king. There's he's a king. got a king. He's now in the lead, and Min is dead to uh, eight. He needs an eight. That's the only way he can win. All of Min's chips are in the pot. Right. He's going to be out if an eight doesn't come on this card. Needs the eight. Min Lee. A seven. Min Lee is it. our first casualty. He is place. indeed. From Las Vegas via Vietnam, he made it a great week for himself, but he is the first player to leave the final table. Min Lee will take home $85,000. All right, shake hands with everybody but Ralph Perry. But Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> and he leaves Ralph stacking his chips. Stoic Russian. Very stoic. His, but not his wife. His, his wife's wife, not stoic. Uh, his wife's cheering. <laughs> and uh, this is... Uh, a little smile from Mr. Ralph Perry. A good win for Ralph Perry on hand 28. One hour, 20 minutes into this 2002 World Series of Poker, only one player eliminated. So now we shuffle up and deal to the eight men who are left at this final table at Benyon's Horseshoe Casino. And Tony D, uh, right uh, off the Tony bat, uh, all puts all his chips in. He's got an ace queen, which all is a good hand to get all your chips in here. He's very low on chips. Hey, Scott Gray. Scott now, calling. Scott Gray has got a pair of queens, which is a, a better hand. I think he just called. I don't think he's raising. I think he said call, so uh, he's going to call whatever Tony D has. And Harley, who looks like an old-fashioned Western gambler, yeah. doesn't he? He's thinking about it, too. Well, the others have folded before Harley. Yeah, Harley's still thinking about it. We might have three players in the sand. He's looking John, at Tony D, and he's looking at Scott. John Wesley Harley. <laughs> Get the 10-gallon hat on. <laughs> Could have been in that game with Wild Bill Hitchcock. Okay, we're waiting on you, they're saying to Harley. What pressure that's going to be. Oh, he's going out. Yeah. Oh, Showed nice. a pair of seven. Okay, two sevens. And now it's down to ace-queen ace queen versus, versus two queens. Uh, queen. Ace-queen for Tony D. Tony D is in dire queen need of an ace. Scott Gray. Yeah, it's pretty much the only way he can win except for a back row flush or straight, so that's unlikely. Tony D needs an ace to stay in this tournament. Here comes the flop. No ace. No the ace. King nine, king deuce. nine deuce. He's an ace. Two spades. Right. Well, Scott's got a spade. But Two queens still away for Scott Gray. Ace of spades. Ah. <laughs> That's very interesting because, like you said, Scott the has the queen has of spades, spades and spades if a spade comes up, Scott will win and knock Tony D out of the tournament. So basically, he needs a queen or a spade. Still an outlet. The case queen or a spade. Otherwise, uh, Tony's going to double up. That's a three. Tony D. Doubles up. Comes through. Tony D, when he Tony needed D it most, he had the hand and the turn here. section in full force. Scott Gray can just hang his head. Day. Well, now that Tony D has got some day. chips, we might see him play a little more aggressively because Tony is known around the poker circles as a very aggressive player. It's been three hours and only one player is out. This is quite unexpected, especially considering the aggressiveness we've seen. Over three hours now into this World Series of Poker, 
And we've only lost one player. Eight of the original nine still bellied up to the bar, waiting for their cards. I don't wear jewelry. I wear a watch. I smiling. A rest smile. I wear a watch. If it, if it does, it's not Marconi, always talking, always smiling. Wanted to get the entry. I only wear functional jewelry. What a treat for these amateurs to be now, here. Ralph Ferry in, in first position has a pair of tens he's going to raise and see how much. Functional functional <laughs> jewelry. Yeah. He makes it 50,000. Looks like it could be 50 or 60. I can't tell from here. Robert's out. John is out. <laughs> Russ is out with the, the flick. But Harley, hang on, thinking about it. John Wesley Harley. Trying to get some kind of tell on Ralph. See, Harley here has an ace jack, ace jack suited, ace jack of clubs, and that's a pretty good hand. But Ralph's opened up in first position again, so Harley doesn't know what to do. He doesn't want to be facing an ace king or an ace queen. That's about the worst hands. Uh, I guess aces or kings are worse, but uh, Ralph's had a lot of ace kings, and I'm sure uh, Harley's thinking about that. But he doesn't have too many chips left, so this would be a good spot to get him in. He, I'm sure he would put, if he knew that uh, Ralph had two tens, he would put his chips in and take a chance of doubling up. Tough decision. Every time I have a hand, you yeah. open up under <laughs> yeah, the gun. <laughs> Just said, Ralph, you open up, uh, every time I have a hand, you open up in front of the gun. I think he's got a call here. He's got to shove all his chips in because you're not going to get too many ace jack suited. And, uh, you can't play too tight. You have to roll the dice here. And Harley has done well up to this point. He hasn't lost any of the seven hands he's been in, and he's stacking them up like he's going to put them in, Gabe. Not yet. I don't know. I'm not, not quite yet. There he goes. Uh -huh. All right, he called. So, uh, no, he raised. He, he put all his chips in, so I'm sure Ralph Perry is going to call him with a pair of tens. No good for Julian. And Scott is out as well. So Ralph Perry. And Harley Hall. Ralph Perry's doing his little uh, KGB uh, bit here. Uh, and there's the cowboy, <laughs> <I need to laughs> of Harley Hall. Yeah, we got a Tom Clancy novel going. <laughs> I don't know why Ralph's taking so long. He's going to call with his pair of tens. There he goes. Well, he's trying to make the amateur sweat probably a little bit. And uh, well, he's very happy. He knows he can win with an Asian jack or three clubs. So that's the kind of hand he wanted Ralph to have. There's the flop. No, uh, no ace or jack. He needs an ace or a jack. You got it. You got a jack. Harley. and a six. So Harley doubles up. Wow, the American comes through. The American amateur comes through. And if he misses Harley, she's happy. And Ralph, not so happy. And Ralph, Mrs. Ralph, not so happy. And, uh, Robert Maroney, who incidentally is ahead in the Mr. Congeniality balloting, uh, shakes hand. I, I, I put him, if he has an ace, I'm a dog. If he has a pair, I hope it's tens. You know, I put him, maybe it was just wishful thinking, but I was hoping he had tens. Uh, if David does defeat Goliath and I win the two million, uh, it's it's going to be a big party with friends and family, of course. And then, uh, uh, but I won't be going to the crap table with it. It'll be going into a portfolio. So that's my plan. Moving forward to hand number seventy-three, and still we have eight of our original nine finalists at this World Series of Poker. Yes, our, our producer has just asked me to inform everybody. Of course, the players can't see these sneak peeks. But right. We have monitors throughout the audience, and they can't see the sneak peeks either. So the only ones that are seeing the sneak peek at the cards are the audiences and ourselves. Lucky us. Yes. It's kind of interesting to see how they're playing. You know, we've never had that ability before. And everybody is folding like a deck of cards, I guess. We come down to the small blind, John Play Shipley. Nice neighbor. And let's see what his cards are. A jack four offsuit. Something you jump in with a lot of money right off the bat, you gave no. No, I don't know no. why. I don't know why he called. He just called. Uh, in a while. He doesn't what like to flop? give up a hand. <laughs> and Russell's got a ten deuce of diamonds, a little bit better hand, because it, um, it's suited. Let's see what the flop is. All spades. Three spades, but with a ten or a deuce. So Russell has uh, has flopped two pair here. <laughs> he looks like he's caught in the headlights. Sixty. Happy he raises, to see the two uh, pair. Sixty thousand. 
And John Shipley, John I think, Jack. will throw his hand away. That's about 60000 Maybe not. <laughs> One would think, or he's certainly thinking about not. No, he's going he's gonna to make a move at this. He has absolutely nothing, but he's going to make a move at it. It looks like he's going to raise uh, 160000 so a moment of John decision now. So he's raised 100000 and, and Russell, Russell with his two pair. Kind of gutsy move. There's a flush out there, three spades, and he's going all in. And, <laughs> what the heck, he's saying. And John Shipley is going to throw his hand away. And Russell does win the pot. And his wife, Ann Mazzola, came out just for the Vegas vacation, but finds herself at the center of the poker world. Um, this exciting thing I've ever seen. Very exciting. Very proud of him. I've never seen him play anything like this before, so this is damn good. He's only been playing six years. As we get set to start hand number 77 of the World Series, we've got a pretty tight pack in the upper four. Ralph Perry, Robert Barconi, John Shipley, and Russell Rosenblum. Still eight players of the original nine at the final table. And Robert Barconi has one of his favorite hands, king-queen offsuit. And he's going to raise it, make it 60000 Incidentally, Robert Barconi is one of the people who didn't put in the full $10,000 entry fee. He played in what they call a satellite, which is like a mini tournament where everybody puts in $1,100, and then the winner of that one-table satellite gets an entry fee in the World Series of Poker and a spot in the tournament, and that's how he got in here. It cost him $1,100, and now he's sitting there with all that money and a chance of winning $2 million. And his king-queen going against Harley's pair of sixes. Well, Harley's definitely going to call. Harley's thinking about what to do here. He's got a pair of sixes. Decision to make. He has watched Robert build up his chip stack. Right, and Holly just calls. Probably uh, a really <sighs> smart play at this point. Tony D is out. The kid, as they call him in England, is out. And it's between Robert, two Americans. Two Americans. Well, first uh, American face-off we've seen in quite a while. All right, let's see what happens Nine, here. Seven, four, here comes the flop. Nine, seven, four. Didn't help Robert Barconi. Still got King High. Harley still has his pair of sixes. Robert needs to match. Robert checks. Harley checks. Nobody that confident. Okay. A five comes out, and that gives Harley an open and straight draw. He's got four, five, six, seven. Robert checks. Okay. Harley checks. <laughs> checks again. Both of them check twice. Last card is a deuce. There's a flush out there, but that doesn't help any of these fellas. Nope. Looks like Robert's going to make a little bet here, trying to buy the pot with King High. He's got 60000 With a glare at Harley as well. What he's trying to do here is get Harley to throw away Ace High. I think that's what he's trying to do. <laughs> See, Harley might have an Ace with a three or something. And, uh, but Harley's going to call with his pair of sixes and win the pot. Got to show now. There's the king queen, and Harley turns over the pair of sixes and takes the pot. And the streak for Harley Hall continues. A pair of sixes, he does beat Robert Bertoni. Harley did play that hand a little conservatively, but he wasn't taking any chances. So Robert Bertoni watches as Harley Hall rakes in the chips on that hand. Hand number 81 now at the World Series of Poker still eight players at the table we've only lost one and it seems pretty unusual to still have a crowded table this late Gabe yeah it is very unusual usually uh, at this point you'd have more than one player gone this far into the tournament but these guys are hanging in there let's find out who's gonna play this one nobody at the international end of the table Ralph looks and no Hey. Well, Robert Barconi has woken up with a pair of jacks here right on the button, so that's a, a, a big hand to have on the button. He makes it 60000 Probably hoping someone's going to call. And John Shipley has an ace jack, and John's uh, definitely going to call. Let's see if he's going to raise. John, our chip leader, coming in to this final table. Still the chip leader right oh. now. He's going to raise. Let's see how much. 
I was hoping for sixty thousand on the button. He raises ninety thousand. Uh, raises another ninety thousand. Mr. Russell so Rosenblum, right. too rich for his blood. Now it's very interesting. Here are Jacks on the button. Yeah, Robert Ooh. doesn't take uh, too Robert much time. He's going all in. All in with two jacks. Robert Varcona, we shot him. Short stack not too long ago. I think Robert's got probably around. Uh, John Shipley's asking Robert to count his chips. He wants to know how much there is. And he's probably trying to get some kind of feel for how loose uh, Robert Varconi is at this point. He's looking straight at the chips, but he's, he's I'm, I'm kind of surprised that he's thinking about possibly calling with an ace jack. It's uh, kind of very marginal hand to throw in another $800,000 on. Is he curious about the amateur player, maybe not having seen him that much, wondering really what, what he's got? Yes. I think if anybody else at this table had raised Seven hundred fifty, eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't think John Shipley. John's gone, right? Yeah. <laughs> Julian Gardner put in that kind of money. Uh, no, Ralph Perry put in that kind of money. Uh, John Shipley wasn't exactly thinking about it, but Robert has done kind of unorthodox things. He's, he's bet Queen Ten. He's bet King Queen a lot. That's and right. He feels that uh, he must feel that Robert's capable I mean, that's of putting seven. in all that money with the worst. That's Hello, fifty. So a deep psychological yeah, study right now. Exactly from John he's studying. Shipley. He's trying to get some kind of feel. He didn't get to this point in the tournament, being the tournament leader, without having a lot of guts. And this is one of these points where he, he's thinking. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know what he's going to do, but it's it's really uh, it's really a very marginal hand to call that kind of money. With. A call. He's going to do it. Can you believe that? And this is going to be very similar to the hand that Tony D had early with Scott Gray, where uh, Scott Gray had queens and Tony D had ace queen. I got to tell him. Robert Bocconi saying, what do I have? What do I got? Jacks, Robert. There they are. There they are. And queen jacks. No, I'm terrible. Yeah, um, John Shipley's in the same position as Tony D. He's an ace. Well, this is one of those hands. A lot of action on hand one and two. They say Russell go back behind him, but he's interested too. But this Russell's, really is a big turning point. Russell might have had uh, a similar hand. Great, great seven. That does not help John Shipley. He's $2 million in the center of the pot. And he needs an ace. It didn't come for him. One more card to catch an ace. Oh, Robert can't believe his luck. So Final card to Jack. Jack. Case Jack. Three what a jacks. fitting Robert card to come up to that hand. Three pot. Jacks for Robert Varconi. Robert Varconi and the man who was down to 250000 after the first hand is now the new chip leader in the World Series of Poker. It's unbelievable. I, I, I can't tell you, and I don't think anyone can tell you what was going on. Uh, maybe we'll ask John Shipley why he thought for some reason that uh, Ace-Jack might be good in that situation. But, you know, his instincts have proved correct for four days, and we sort of left him there. Oh, and I think he's feeling kind of numb. Kind of, kind of numb, right. That would be a good word to describe exactly what John Shipley is feeling at this moment. Oh, just an amazing turn of events on a hand that you think might have been very normal. And John goes out, but no, there's our new chip leader. There is something never before seen here at the World Series of Poker, a $25,000 chip. They'll be using those because when there's six million on the table, even stacks of 10,000 become unmanageable. As expected, dramatic changes here at the World Series of Poker. John Shipley has fallen on hard times, while Robert Broconi has jumped from last place to first. Yeah. The antes are now 5,000 apiece. The blinds 15 and 30,000 as the pressure begins to be turned up at this table. Still eight players, but a change in the chip leader and the overall demeanor at this table now, I think, Gabe. Well, Robert Broconi is firmly in control. He's got the most chips, and he seems uh, relaxed and comfortable. Russell has an uh, ace-queen here. He bet 60000 which seems to be the standard opening raise. Ace-queen has worked today. Worked for Tony D, and we're still waiting for Tony D to show some of that famous speed that he has, but he's been kind of quiet. Yeah, I want to see him play. Julian's out, Scott's out, Ralph's out. Now look at this. Robert Barconi 
has a pair of aces. Oh, can you believe that? That's how we started this day with Julian. Right, this is unbelievable. Uh, see how much he raises here. Now, what does he want to take from his friend, his well, American friend in this uh, They're not US friends shooting. right now. No. <laughs> He's going to raise. And Russell calls immediately. Russell calls. You know, he wants to make a stand. Russell will get very unlucky if a queen comes on this flop because he'll, he'll go all in if a queen comes. Two jacks. Two Jack, jacks and a Jack nine. nine. A check. Robert yeah. checks. That's 200. Russell bets 200,000. That's 200,000. And all in. <laughs> yes, Robert does not wait. He goes all in. And that is, is all the in. strength you carry with those Robert chips. Turns. Robert turns he says courtesy and he shows, uh, he shows Robert Russell his aces. Jack. Nice thing to do. Nice thing to get the aces. <laughs> well, that's even better. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Robert Marconi starting to show that he maybe is worthy of at least two million of that six million dollar stack Thanks. of money. Bill Helmuth is starting to get nervous. <laughs> courtesy this, pair of this aces, time. a pair of shears. Yeah, yeah. That's what Robert Marconi is holding right now. Well, Russell just got beat there, but he told me earlier that he's got a good perspective coming into this World Series. Um, as some friends have said to me, though, I'm kind of like a real life rounder. The only difference is. Uh, Matt Damon decided he couldn't make it through law school, dropped out to play poker. I wanted to play poker full time. My family convinced me to go to law school anyway. I played poker through law school and uh, knock on wood, I finished first in my class while uh, coming out here to play the World Series between exams and two consecutive years. So I consider myself quite lucky and I hope that I can continue to be lucky today. Um, Tony D is a very, uh, very popular high limit player. He's well known. He's probably has more poker experience than anyone else at this table. Uh, playing high limit and in the toughest games against the toughest competition. You got to get a hold of some chips in order to make that experience pay off. Right. Yeah, he hasn't done that, and uh, he hasn't been. He hasn't played his game. His game is being very aggressive and relentless, and I haven't seen him play that game uh, so far today, or even even yesterday. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised at that. I think once he gets hold of some chips, he's going to have to start moving them around a lot. But I think he's tentative to try and get a hold of some chips. There he goes. He just uh, moved all in on that. Yes, game. and he's picked a very unusual time to do it because all he has is a clean jack offsuit. He's got to hope that nobody here behind him wakes up with a hand or Tony D's going to be in serious trouble. Uh, maybe he's frustrated a bit. He's not been able to play his game. No, he hasn't, and, and that is frustration. Robert Varconi has called with an ace king. <laughs> Another hand for Robert Varconi. Oh, what a day he's had. And Tony D is in serious trouble. He's a hand in or Jack and hope that Robert doesn't get an ace or king. Can't you read it on Tony D's face right there? He knows, he knows the odds. Yeah, he knows he's in trouble. Actually, the odds are probably a little less than 2 to 1. Here's a flop 7 4, deuce. No jacks, no queen. The player with a heart here is Robert. We're going to do turn cards. Eight of hearts, eight that, of hearts. That, that makes things a little worse for Tony because Robert has the, uh, the king of hearts, hearts, so Tony needs a queen or a jack that's not a heart. Tony Wade can stay in the tournament. This could be it for Tony D, and it is. That's it. Uh, well, he is known as an aggressive player. He was just stifled the whole day. He never really had a chance to play his game and graciously leaves the table. Right, and you, you hit it on the head. Sometimes you just wait so long and you become frustrated and you take a shot. And he could have got lucky and, and won with the Queen Jack, but he didn't. And he's our eighth place finisher. And $100,000 goes to Tony D, one of the more popular players around. The fans certainly would have liked to have seen him and just take his payday and go away immediately. He's taking it and he's smiling, but... Another seven players remaining. Tony D showing us $100,000. Thank you. The action at the table continues. Robert Varconi back to action now. He has ace 10. And he's, like he's raising about $80,000. Wow. John Shipley has a pair of sevens and uh, he's putting all his chips in. Looks like he has about uh, 300 or so thousand dollars. So it's a uh, $250,000, $260,000 raise. Or a real reversal of fortune from earlier when you saw Robert throwing in the minimal chips he had. Now it's Shipley. This is a tough call for Robert Varconi. Uh, he doesn't want to double up John Shipley so like John Shipley, Shipley doubled him up. Right and Ace-10 is a marginal hand. Uh, 
So he's got a decision to make here. It's a, it's a tough decision. Counting out the chips, it, it's exactly $250,000 raise. Let's see what Robert does. Even. Double up or gone for John Shipley. Really serious about this one. It's a tough decision. He says call, Robert Bertoni calls. He says call, a call, as we yeah, say two in Brooklyn. Seven versus ace ten. Calls. Ace ten for Robert Bartoni, two seven. Ace ten a pair of sevens. John it's Shipley. another of those even money and shots. Sevens being a very, very slight favorite. John, slight All right, here comes here. the flop. The flop is king, king eight deuce. Two no. King eight deuce, two no two ace, no ten. Right, John Robert needs an ace or ten. John saying don't come out. There's the ace. Oh, that could spell the end to John Robert Shipley. Robert Marconi has been a very lucky man this afternoon. John Shipley needs a seven, or he's out. Burn and the jack. And that is it. That is John Shipley who came in leading this tournament with over $2 million. He's out in seventh place. Amazing. He had more than twice as many chips as anybody else who went to the final table. Robert Marconi, you saw down to his last quarter million earlier in the game. And talk about a change in the tide. And there is a very stunned Englishman, John Shipley. Not going to be a nice uh, ride across a pond going back to England. He thought he was going to have uh, satchels full of $2 million. Going back with 125000 well, Nothing to sneeze at, but still, when you get to that final table, you have a shot at the big money. And Shipley is not going to go home with the big money. And he just didn't get the breaks today. The 33rd Annual World Series of Poker is brought to you with pride by Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, where millions are played and legends are made. Once on the brink of elimination, Brooklyn amateur Robert Marconi has been knocking them out like a heavyweight champ. Can he be stopped? Five hours now into this final table, and it is Robert Vark. Tony with the grip on that cash right there that sits behind the players. Two million dollars to the winner. He is now the chip leader and in control. He's playing very well. He's, he's also gotten very lucky, but he, he's playing well. He's aggressive. Uh, he's calling uh, and he's instilled some fear in the other players. They know that he's willing to shove those chips in the center of the table. And what I've seen also are some hands that you mentioned that might not be Bet as strongly in another situation, but he's thrown some doubt into the uh, competitor's mind. Now, Julian Gardner here has just said that uh, he's going all in. Julian Gardner uh, betting all his chips. Let's see what he has. He's got a pair of queens. And Scott Gray uh, with an ace eight. Thinking about calling his all in bet, which again is uh, kind of unusual. He must think that there's a possibility that Julian is trying to buy the antis and the blinds. And maybe Ace-8 is good. But I, I, I can't seriously see him calling here, but I've been wrong so far in this tournament. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I just, I'm Let's a little go. surprised. Well, I'm well, a little surprised that he... all in before you, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, there he goes. No. Come out. Ace Julian ace. chose the queen, and wow. Scott's very happy. Very happy to have thrown in, yeah. 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 All right, well, Julian is not too shy about throwing those two queens up because he is one of the more powerful players in the world, and he's showing why right now. All right, hand number 119, and still six players at the final table of this World Series of Poker. Discipline is going to be the key from here on out, I think, Gabe. Well, sure, because... Uh, Player comes in sixth year uh, is going to win 150,000, and still a big difference between 150,000 and two million, and that's constantly on all their minds. The two million is staring right at them. Robert's oh. not going to play, but look at this. Russell is going all in here with a jack six of diamonds. And Julian, <coughs> squeeze on you. Julian Garner has aces. Wow. I mean, talking about the wrong time to make a move like that. Call. Oh. Julian Garner has woke up with a pair of aces and. Russell Rosenblum is in shock. He put all his money in with a jack six of diamonds, trying to buy the antis and the blinds, and he is a huge underdog now. Oh, getting consoled by Robert Barconi, but 
But Russell does have more chips than Julian, so he's not out of this tournament if he loses. I'm saying goodbye anyway. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> but no, he will he will not be out. He'll still be in the tournament. This is unbelievable. Look at this flop. Russell has got jacks and a, a flush draw, so right now it's pretty even. I mean, it's almost yeah. exactly even. And Julian can't believe his bad luck here. He hasn't lost, but uh, he can lose with a diamond. He can lose with a six or a jack. Queen. So now on the last card, Russell needs a jack. One more time. A six and a, a diamond. And a prayer. One more time to the god of poker. A little, we don't usually see this. We don't usually see players get down on their knees and ready to the poker. Jack or a diamond. Poker, right? Jack or a diamond. Uh, he wants a jack, a six, or a diamond. And Julian Bond is saying no. Anything but a jack, six, or a diamond. Here it comes. Jack, six, or a diamond. Yes! Oh! Well, the prayer is not answered for Russell Rosenblum, though he's not out of the game. For Julian Gardner, the whiz kid, they call him the Harry Potter of poker. Another set of aces. He's still there. So what happened there is uh, Russell was trying to buy the ante. Now, why he got all his chips, he could have 250000 and would have achieved the same thing, but it just becomes, uh, you just get to the point where you want to shove all your chips in, and, and for some inexplicable reason, Russell reached that point, and he just he got very unlucky. Well, it goes back to that discipline factor, and maybe the amateur status, maybe not having that experience at the big table, maybe that played a role in it, or, hey, just let's make something happen, is what he's saying. Hey, what an entertaining hand it was at the World Series of Poker at Benyon's. After five and a half hours and 119 hands, the World Series of Poker is still up for grabs. In part two, a new champion will be crowned. Will it be the Brooklyn amateur with the Midas touch or the resilient Californian? Perhaps Scotty's Irish eyes will be smiling or those of the 23-year-old English whiz kid. Will the unflappable Russian pro take the gold or can the Washington attorney bounce back and win his case on appeal? Will Phil Helmuth, the lion with a roaring mouth, get shorn like a lamb? Don't miss the World Series of Poker, part two. I'm Lon McCarran for Gabe Kaplan. Thanks for watching part one of the World Series of Poker. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. From Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, welcome to the 33rd Annual World Series of Poker, the biggest cash game in history. Six million dollars is on the table, and it's up for grabs. Over the course of four days, 631 players from around the world added up $10,000 each to get a crack at the record two million dollar first prize. Nine made it to the final table. Three have been eliminated, including chip leader John Shipley from England, who began the day holding one-third of the $6 million in chips. Brooklyn amateur Robert Varconi rose from rags to riches when his pair of jacks held up against Shipley's ace jack. Varconi raked in a $2 million pot and broke the Englishman's spirit. Whiz kid Julian Gardner continued his spirited play and has a chance to become the youngest world champion ever. In the 119th hand, attorney Russell Rosenblum tried to steal a pot with a jack six of diamonds by betting all his chips instead of just raising. But as luck would have it, he ran into Julian's aces and lost most of his chips. Now, Russell and two other American amateurs are left to face three foreign-born professionals. By day's end, one will win the crown, the $2 million cash first prize, and the coveted platinum and gold championship bracelet. Hey, Robo Varconi from Brooklyn leads the field over here, and followed by Russian Ralph Petty and Julian Gardner from Manchester, England. And then the rest of the field in No Limit, Texas Hold'em. And remember, no lead is safe. Nice hand, Julian. <coughs> How do you call with that piece of cheese? I'm all in. <laughs> Six players still in this final table. Uh, hand number 120 now. And Russell is really down to the felt, as they Didn't say. Like He's got flop, about 95,000 left. So he's going to have to make a move. 
because the Annie's and the blinds are going to eat him up in one round if he doesn't. Ralph is out. Chip leader Robert Varconi, he's out. Russell's going all in. <laughs> he's got an ace eight, he's putting it all in, and that's not a bad play at this point. Gets a little round of applause from the crowd, from the other players at the table. And for the whole time that he's been here, not just for that last throw in. Dark. Yeah, he's been a very spirited player, but it might come to an end here because I'm Scott Gray has got an ace king. Just say call, call don't worry about it, Scott. <laughs> Just call it, he king. says, don't even look. <laughs> Russell uh, sees Scott's ace king, knows that he's in bad shape. He needs an eight to come out. A resigned Russell Rosenblum, perhaps? There's an ace and a king. He now needs two eights. And I'm afraid that's it for Russell Rosenblum. He's already moving into position for the congratulatory handshake. Well, actually, a king came up here. He can split the pot with the case ace. I don't think he knows it. He's, he surrendered and he, he doesn't get the case ace. And Russell Rosenblum is our sixth place finisher. And it's good for $150,000. Not bad for the attorney who came to Vegas for some cards and vacation. And Julian Gardner goes over and congratulates him. Uh, he was, uh, as you said, a very spirited player. Not bad for the lawyer from Bethesda, Maryland, who came out to Vegas as an amateur just for a little cards and a vacation. $150,000. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. Thank you. About 350. Hand number 121 at the World Series of Poker at Benyon's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. Five players left at the final table. And Robert Varconi here is still way in the lead. But he won't be playing this hand. Harley Hall considers and considers everything. Always he's going all in here. He's got an ace eight, as we see. That's a good hand at this point to go all in. He's raised about $100,000, and uh, he has to do it because uh, he can't really last too long with these antis and blinds so high. Well, Ralph Perry now. Pass I think he wants to, to play, to but he too considering his whole cards. <clears throat> Ralph's got a queen 10, a hand that has proved very lucky for Robert Varconi, so maybe that's... Uh, on Ralph's mind, you know, you think about the hands that have won before, and that enters into a player's, uh, a player's thought patterns. Uh, he also would like to knock Harley out because every player that goes, it's more money for the players remaining. So he, he doesn't feel he has the best hand at this point, but he's thinking, is it worth it to put in another 100000 And he's got a big decision to make, and I don't blame him for taking a lot of time. Harley uh, not trying to show too much emotion here. Now, you've played in this World Series of Poker uh, a number of times. When you see that... I, I could have won any year I wanted well, I, I to, know incidentally. That. And I, I let these guys think that they can play, and I play in it most years, and I don't really do well, but I want them to feel good because that's their occupation. I appreciate it, and you want to be here uh, showing people... And I'd rather do skill. the... I'd rather be with you, Lon, <laughs> in the booth, watching this go on. I'm flattered. I'm flattered. But when you see that hand that he's got, you've seen that it's worked elsewhere at that final table. Your tendency is, well, maybe it's just today's the day. Well, that's Russell. Now that you're not in the tournament anymore, Russell, what would you think these players have right now <laughs> if you were still sitting at that table? I was, although I wasn't there when the chips went in. Harley's been getting his chips in with, uh, he's probably got a reasonably sized ace, although at this point, he's got to make a move quickly. So, I mean, he could have any sort of, I don't know, I'd say any type of King-10, King-Jack, something like that. He's probably thinking of calling with some sort of mediocre queen. He's probably looking at Queen-10 or Queen-9 that he's sitting there, and he's going to lay it down. Nope, he's calling. I think he's got about a queen 10 or queen 9. That's what he called me with last time, I think. I called it. Medium ace first queen 10. No queens or 10s on the flop. 9 5 deuce. Harley Hall looking to double up. Here comes Wall Street. Three. Oh, he's got to get past one more card. One more card that isn't a queen or a ten. Harley will double his chip. Seven. Hey. All right, well, Harley did. Uh, the very popular Harley Hall from California 
It's a congratulations uh, from Robert Varconi. From Mr. Congeniality. <laughs> Absolutely. The 33rd Annual World Series of Poker is brought to you with pride by Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, where millions are played and legends are made. Play as each receive two cards face down. Then share five community cards in between rounds of betting. The best five out of seven cards win. As the deal moves around the table, two players are forced to put up money before seeing their hand. These are called blinds and they speed up the game. With no limits on betting, players can lose their whole stack in any single moment. Robert Varconi, Ralph Perry, and Julian Gardner hold most of the chips right now, but crowd favorite Harley Hall is hanging on, but the noose is tightening. The Andes are still at 5,000, the blinds 15 and 30, hand number 124 at the World Series of Poker. Robert Varconi still leading. Ralph Perry's not going to play this hand. Our leader, neither. If I have jack six, I am not. Oh, he says, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> moving in with a jack six, referring to what Russell did. He had a good flop to it. But he is yeah. uh, examining this hand. He's got an ace, deuce of spades, which is a really sure nice did. hand to uh, have in the small blind. He's going all in. Ah. About $230,000, $240,000. Crowd loves to see Harley move all in. And now Julian, Julian has a king seven offsuit. How much is that? And he's asking how much. What's it worth to you, Julian? Well, I could be wrong about this line, but I think that Julian, you see the seven is the bottom card, and he looked at the king, the top card first, and he got kind of excited when he looked at that king. And then he saw the seven. He wasn't too thrilled about the seven, but he's thinking about calling. I think if he saw the seven first, he might not have. And then he saw the king. He would have thrown his hand away. But he's he's uh, he's thinking about it now. He was tickled with that picture card. Well, he he might feel that if uh, if Harley has a queen jack suited uh, or some hand like that in this position, he might play. Also, might feel that Harley has a pair of fives, a pair of sixes. Uh, I'm kind of surprised though that he is thinking about calling king seven offsuit. It is not a hand to really call with at this point in the tournament. But, you know, you can't say these players are at the final table and I'm here in the booth with you, so <laughs> he's, he's thinking about it. Now, is one factor, the factor that we've been talking about throughout, the amateur status of a player like Harley Hall and maybe the unpredictableness of him coming in and not doing what Julian might have do, done in that same situation? No, Harley has played very predictable. He's only played quality hands. And uh, he's going to call. He calls her with that queen seven, off, a king seven offsuit. He needs a king or seven. He's not that really much of an underdog. Probably about a three to two. To Harley's hand. But if nothing comes out, no one makes a pair. Harley's going to win again. Here it comes. Five, jack eight. No kings, no sevens. Harley is still leading. A seven! Oh, oh, oh. oh Harley. Oh. And Julian says, thank you. And Harley says, how could you do this to me? He needs an ace on this card. Nope. Another seven. <laughs> Julian's made three sevens, and Harley is out of the tournament. What a popular player he proved to be here in Las Vegas from California. Harley Hall is going to go out in fifth position with $195,000 in his pocket. And Robert Marconi is telling Harley to see next year. Mr. Congeniality once again. I don't think he's going to win the swimsuit competition. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> uh, so Harley Hall with a brave exit. Julian Gardner, he uh, started the tournament off with a bang. He's had his moments, and perhaps and really he's coming see, back. You see how much luck is involved here, yeah. because uh, Ace Deuce is a, is a three to two favorite over that King Seven, but the guy who was a favorite didn't win the hand, and now he's getting his money from uh, Denny Binion Bain. One hundred ninety-five thousand. Uh, very well liked player. Let's get him up there. What's that? A million. 
1.15. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we are down to four now, the World Series of Poker. We're here with uh, former World Series of Poker champion and legendary poker player Amarillo Slim. How you doing, Slim? Good, Gabe. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So what do you think? 631 players. You ever th think it would come to that? Couldn't envision it. Well, how has this changed since there was 30, 40? The year you won, oh, how many players were in the World Series of Poker? 18. 18. 18 of us. And we thought we were the only people in the world could play. Now everybody in here can play. From all over the globe. There are still four players vying for that unique bracelet. Anything can happen at the world's biggest gaming event. Four players remain. One of them will become the 2002 World Series of Poker champion. Robert Marconi still in the lead. Julian Gardner not going to play. Scott Gray, nope. And as we look at Ralph Perry, he's uh, removed the coat and showing that unusual sartorial splendor that he brings to us all. Yes, this was uh, a request oh, from some of the people in the crowd with split personalities. <laughs> <laughs> they asked Ralph if he'd take his jacket off. And Ralph has called uh, the big blind. Uh, nobody has raised. Three diamonds come out. Ralph has King 10 with the 10 of diamonds. And Robert has uh, four seven of clubs, so. If uh, Ralph bets, he'll take the spot, or whoever bets might take the spot. He bets 30000 Robert shows his first What do you know, Robert? Lost a hand. Hey. <laughs> he is invincible, I guess, as it were. <laughs> uh, well, Ralph Perry with a uh, moderate pot. It doesn't hurt the cause. Right, when that's, that's a hand where uh, neither player had too much. And probably either one could have won with a bet. Okay, we're here with our fifth place finisher in the 2002 World Series of Poker, Harley Hall. Harley, congratulations. Good. Thank you. You seem to be a sentimental favorite among a lot of the people here, local people. Yeah, that, that helped a lot, the uh, support I felt from the crowd. Yeah. What a long, strange trip it's been the last four days, and I'm very fortunate with the stack I've had just to even be here. So, you know, I'm Take very home, grateful. Uh, $195,000? Not bad. Not bad for five days' work. Well, Harley, congratulations. Gabe, thank you very much. Thanks for glad, playing. Glad I had the opportunity. Must be a hell of a guy to have so many people rooting for you. That, that was very nice, yeah, I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Okay, our fifth place finisher, Harley Hall. Back to the table, hand 140. <laughs> Players seem to be discussing uh, when to take a dinner break. Okay, I think we should take a break. Robert right, says play. we should take a break. <laughs> and Ralph says, I'll play. A little gamesmanship? Well, I think that's it because usually you stick to a stringent schedule as to when the breaks are, but when it gets down to the final table in the final tournament, it's, it's finished. It's not going to last long. If the players agree, they can take that break whenever they want, and there is a little gamesmanship. I think Ralph sees that Robin wants to take a break, and he doesn't want to take a break. Robin is raised. And Scott Gray is going all in. Robert has his favorite hand, Queen Much 10, and Scott left. Gray has an ace nine. He's raised 255. Scott game. has raised 255, so Robert has a decision. Julian is keeping his cards. I don't like it. Julian is out, but I think he wants to show everybody what he had, what he went out with. Since this is Phil's favorite hand, I'm going to call. He calls. Oh, oh. Queen ten. We Robert's going to call already. an additional $250,000 with Queen 10. <laughs> oh, and he mentioned Phil because that's, that's the hand he knocked Phil out on. That's the, that's the, the hand he knocked Phil Helmuth out of the tournament on. So Robert's got to get lucky one more time and catch uh, Queen or a 10. And the flop is Queen, Queen, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> Not just one Queen. This time he's caught two Queens. <laughs> Can you believe that guy? It's done for Scott. Scott got a nine. It's over. Scott Gray caught an ace and a nine, but wasn't enough because Robert Barconi caught two queens on the flop. 
Thank you. Thank you. These seasoned professionals cannot believe the luck of the amateur Robert Barconi. Again, Scott Gray, another one of the great players who was more or less handcuffed much of the day. Well, if you're going to get lucky on one day, you can't find a better day to get lucky than the final day of the World Series of Poker. So Scott Gray, who entered the final table in sixth position, betters himself by one and goes out in fifth. He will take with him back to Ireland $281,000. Just never got a chance to get off the mark today. Welcome back to the 2002 World Series of Poker. Even though it's hard to see him behind his stack of chips, our leaderboard shows Robert holding on to his lead. Hand number 141, we now have three players left at the table. Ralph Perry, Julian Gardner from England, and the amateur from the United States, Robert Varconi, the chip leader. And his wall of chips. His wall of chips indeed. Julian has a pair of tens and he's raised 90,000. Now Ralph Perry has a pair of jacks. Let's see what he's gonna do. Ralph is deliberate as always, taking his time. He's been consistent in that demeanor too and that's uh, to his credit. He raises, I think it's 200,000. Robert. Marconi. Robert Marconi has a oh. pair of aces. His hard luck continues here. <laughs> Have you ever seen a final table with one player who's drawn so many cards? He has had an amazing, and this hand is amazing in itself because you have three players. One of them has a pair of tens, one of them has a pair of jacks, and Robert Marconi can't believe his luck. He's looking at a pair of aces. He is jumping inside. You know he is just jumping. Well, he's trying to figure out what to do. Right now, how much to take from the opponents? Is that what's well, going through his mind? He can just call. $290,000 out there. That's what uh, Ralph has made. All in. It. He's all going in. all in. All in. <laughs> he says, I am not going to wait. That looked like Julian was caught by a surprise. Yeah, Julian was caught by surprise. Julian thought the hand was going to be between him and Ralph, and that he was going to go all in with his tens, I think, you know, if I'm reading him correctly. And he was very surprised when Robert went all in now. He's, he's frustrated. He he's got, what to do. He's got two opponents. He's got to worry about Robert because Robert has more chips than him. And if he loses this hand to Robert, he's out of the tournament. There's also a big difference between second and third place. He might want to let Ralph and Robert fight it out because second place is $1,100,000. Yep. And that's what he's going to do. He's not going to play the tens. He's going to let Ralph and Robert fight it out, but Ralph's got to decide now if he wants to go on with a pair of jacks. Interesting on Julian's part because maybe he is thinking to that heads up man on man final. I think he is, and he's also thinking that with two players, his tens probably aren't good, that one of them probably has a better hand. It was a very smart play to lay him down. All right, so now it's up to Ralph Perry to times. make the decision. Yeah, I was moving in. This guy's got a monster. I was going to move in on the, on the route. Right? Well, he hasn't done too well against Robert, but he does have a pair of jacks. And if he could double through Robert, he's going to do it. He's going. Oh, yeah. well, and he's not going to be too happy when he sees uh, Robert's aces. All right, so it's Ralph Perry and Robert Barconi. There's the jacks. And we've already seen this, but he shows the two aces to the rest of the house. One at a time, incidentally. <laughs> and Ralph realizes now that he's uh, got to catch a jack to stay in this tournament. And oh, he's Julian, just happy he's out. Well, he's congratulating himself uh, on not calling. Big smile, Robert Barconi's face. Flop. Not much help. Ralph Perry needs a jack. Two cards left. One of them's got to be a jack, or he's a third place finisher. Another nine. One card left. Ralph Perry needs a jack. He has two jacks left in the deck. He needs one of them right here. A three. That's it. Ralph Perry comes in third. 
What a great run he had. He had a lot of terrific hands, very entertaining hands. Ralph Perry going out in third position. And look at that, two tens. Everybody sees it now in the house. Tens, jacks, and aces on that last hand. Very unusual. Ralph Perry puts his jacket back on. Maybe you should have left it on. <laughs> well, Gardner is just congratulating himself, as you mentioned, that he was out of that hand. He could have been blown away with the rest of them. And well, yeah, yeah, but, you know, uh, an interesting thing also was that uh, Robert Varconi having the aces could have sucked Julian in if he just called the $200,000 raise by Ralph, but he decided that he wasn't going to take any chances. And, he scared him off. And he scared him off. If he would have just called the 200000 I don't know what Julian would have done, but I'm, I, I'm pretty sure he would have at least called. Well, Ralph Perry getting a well-deserved round of applause here at Benyon's Horseshoe Casino. He will take third position and $550,000. He does look a little bit shell-shocked, but all these players are exhausted and stunned after so much poker. And Julian Gardner has just picked up at least $550,000 difference between second and third place. And there, Perry getting his money, and what is left of the more than $6 million purse being brought to the table? $3,100,000, 1.1 to second place, and $2 million to the winner of this heads-up match. And Robert Varconi, who entered this tournament by winning a satellite, investing $1,100, could be the guy. He's a favorite right now. He's got most of the chips. He's going to walk away with the $2 million first prize. Imagine that, $1,100. Yeah. We'll just be quiet and let the people look at that $3,100,000 on the table there, Lon. And drool. Since gaming legend Benny Binion founded the World Series of Poker in 1970, more prize money has been awarded at the World Series than at all the Grand Slam golf championships combined. And unlike commercially sponsored golf, the World Series is totally funded by the players themselves. The World Series has grown at a staggering pace since its humble beginnings when Benny Binion invited eight of the world's best players to play until one emerged as champion. Well, Johnny Moss won that championship and a couple more. But even he would shake his head in disbelief at this year's numbers. For six weeks, more than 7,500 players from dozens of countries played in 35 individual championships, including most of the variations of stud, Raz, Omaha, Texas Hold'em, and draw. Almost $20 million in prize money was awarded. The ultimate world champion is determined by a five-day tournament culminating in this event today. They are playing seven card, no limit Texas Hold'em with a $10,000 buy-in. This year, a record 631 players contributed more than $6 million to the prize pool. Robert Varconi, Ralph Perry, and Julian Gardner. The Binion family is tied to the World Series of Poker, and Benny's daughter Becky hasn't missed a beat in making this event the biggest cash championship ever staged anywhere in any sport. We're here now with Becky Binion Bainan, the owner of the Horseshoe. Becky, how many of these tournaments have you seen? All of them. All of them? I've been to all of them. From the time your daddy started them? Yes, uh -huh. 33 years ago. And the bracelet here is what today's winner is going to get along with $2 million? Yes, uh, and it's diamond and platinum. And we thought it'd be different to have, uh, nice to have a different bracelet to mark the winner of the World Series of Poker. This is what poker players all over the world go for. This is, means you're number one, numero uno in the world of poker, the champion of the World Series of Poker, and the $2 million is very nice, but this is stature. This means you're the best poker player in the world if you have this on your wrist. Welcome to the 2002 World Series of Poker. We have a very interesting side thing. When the final table started, there's a gentleman named Phil Helmuth, a very modest man. <laughs> very beloved gentleman around the World Series of Poker. Former world champion, seven-time bracelet winner. Former world champion, seven-time bracelet winner. He was knocked out of the tournament by Robert with a queen ten. Very sorely, because he held an ace-king. I can't believe that Phil Helmuth would get sore about anything. He's just a magnanimous, 
giving, caring, sensitive type of guy who cares more about other people's feelings than his own. Well, well Gabe, I mean, if somebody pushed it in on you before the flop and you had ace king and they turned over queen 10, you'd be a little upset too. I would just smile and say, nice hand. Well, how would you feel inside though? Okay, well, we know how Phil felt inside because he said that if Robert won this tournament, he would shave his head or he would let Robert shave his head. Ever, I don't think we've ever had a tidbit like this at the World Series. We've never had this, but we do, just in case, have a pair of clippers. And we will be ready to clip, or Robert will be ready to clip, if he happens to win his tournament. So, beside the $2 million and the bracelet, there's further incentive for Robert. <laughs> There's no question who you're rooting for to win this thing. Well, wait a minute now. I, I lose either way. Think about this, because if Julian Gardner wins it, then he's the youngest player to ever win. He takes away my title of being the youngest player to ever win. And if he wins, I get my head shaved, which has never happened before. So I lose either way, baby. <laughs> Go to war, gentlemen. That's just like Phil Helmuth, never thinking about himself, just hoping. <laughs> Now we have a good tournament. We're down to our final two players, Benny. Let's get it on. Head to head till someone's dead. That is the name of the game now. Robert has a substantial lead, but it can quickly disappear when you're playing one-on-one. -on -one. Here we go. We're down to our final two players. And they congratulate each other. I don't know if they understood the word each other was saying, but they're here. are being very civil about it. We're going to shuffle up and deal. A little different game, Lon, when it gets down to two players. What is the key aspect when you get head to head? Well, there's going to be very few times when you're going to have really quality hands. So it really comes down to reading your opponent, <laughs> knowing when to bet. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see if Robert keeps up his aggressive play. Still jolly, though. <coughs> Still laughing. Mm -hmm. Still Mr. Congeniality. The only thing bigger than his stack of chips is a stack of cash that's out there now on the table. Julian calls, calls the blind. The Robert, who has a king six, is going to raise. He raises $100,000 with a king and six. Robert makes it 100000 No That's call. it. He throws his hand away. We didn't get a chance to give you a peek. We didn't see what it was. He had his hand. So Robert. the first salvo in this head-to-head -head goes to Robert Varconi. Okay, Ralph Perry, our third-place finisher, five hundred and fifty thousand dollars richer, from uh, originally from Russia, Western. by Who's way of Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. Oh yeah. And now a Las Vegas resident. That's right. You played very well. Next year, maybe first place. I love Vegas, and I love to play in a whole show. They have the best tournament. Uh, you're $550,000 richer. Nice country, America. Wow, yeah. what a country. What a country. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, when I when I said that I would uh, shave my head, I, uh, I didn't realize that Robert was capable of playing as well. Sometimes, you know, you rise to a level that you didn't know you're capable of, and I think that's what's happened to Robert. It can happen in anything in life, but it's happening to Robert in this poker game. Each player now will ante $10,000. The blinds are twenty dollars and $40,000. Could this force some moves here and there, Gabe? Well, we'll see if Robert's luck continues. Uh, he's against uh, Julian, who's regarded as the top young player in Europe. Julian calls. He has a 4-5 offsuit. And Robert lets it go. Robert's got jack-7. See the flop. King 4 3. King 4-3. Julian has a pair of fours with his 4-5. Robert checks. Julian bets a little bit, 30, 40,000. Robert throws his hand away. Nope, didn't want it. $3.1 million on the table. $2 million to the winner. One point one. Uh, I can't say loser. <laughs> to the runner-up, we'll say. Robert Varconi, our chip leader for most of the day, taking on Julian Gardner. Robert's got a queen jack of spades here. A 
I'll raise. He's going to raise. Robert announces raise. And puts Robert raises 50,000. Now, this is amazing. Julian has a queen jack also, queen jack offsuit. Not quite as good a hand as Robert, but they basically have the same hand. And now, Lon, we're going to find out who the best player is. Whoever wins this hand is the best is player. Is the best player? With queen jack. Best player with <laughs> queen jack. It's going to be interesting to see what happens if a queen or a jack doesn't come on the flop or a straight draw or something. If nothing comes, who's going to win the hand? Good study in poker right here. Right away, there's a queen. Oh, there's a queen. King, queen, six, All right, who wants to be aggressive is the key. You can be aggressive right now. Who wants to be? Robert bets 50,000. See how Julian handles it. Julian's playing defense though right now. We'll see. He's Julian just going to call. Playing it safe. Oh, I know. Four, four spades. spades. Incidentally, uh, Robert can't make a flush. There was no spades on the flop. So they basically, it's the same hand. Robert bets another 50,000. Robert bets 50,000. That's what Julian does here. Head to head with the same hand. Julian, Julian calls. just calls again. <laughs> and here is a river. Check check. check, check. They both checked on the oh. river. They both have queen jack. <laughs> That's a push. And blackjack, they'll split the pot. Nice on. Well, I can just tell you that uh, that's not what I expected to happen. Now I know how you play that hand. Expected a little more? Expected someone to do something. You raised it. I only called it. <laughs> Interesting study. But it's easy to say that when you're sitting in the booth. Thank you for giving us our chips back. Julian hopes that they could split all the chips right now. Absolutely. Something magical about springtime in Las Vegas. Outside, the weather is still cool enough to enjoy, but inside Binion's Horseshoe Casino, the heat is intense. Thousands of dreamers from around the world have been drawn to this mecca of poker to try their luck in the biggest show on earth, the World Series of Poker. Amateurs, club players, and professionals alike come to the horseshoe to capture glory and riches. There is nothing like it anywhere in the world. Welcome back to the 2002 World Series of Poker from Binion's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. The leaderboard hasn't changed much. Robert Varconi still holding the big lead, but Julian Gardner just needs to double up a couple of times, and he could be even with our leader. Thrust and parry, thrust and parry. One of these two men will become the World Series champion very soon. And surprise, surprise, Robert has two jacks on the button. <laughs> He's going to raise. He raises 40,000. I just want Julian going out here. Julian's got the seven nine of diamonds, and I'm pretty sure Julian's going to call. See what the flop brings. Perfect, uh, perfect amount for Julian to call. See if he can get lucky on the flop. But not too much to scare Julian away. So here we go. A pair of jacks versus a nine seven of diamonds. King of diamonds, three of diamonds. Mm. Now that gives uh, Julian a flush draw. Let's see how he plays it. He checks. Robert's gonna play. Robert bets 80,000. Now Julian can raise here, or he can just call. He's gonna call for sure. I would think he'd probably raise something just to find out where Robert is at. Because if Robert doesn't have a king or a pair. If Julian raises, he'll go out. It's an expensive test. Yeah, but that's what this game is. You have to take a chance at some point. He'd probably be taking a chance at the wrong point if uh, if he bets a lot, because with that king out there, it'd be hard for Robert to call. But he just calls the 80,000. He doesn't raise at all. Just calls the 80,000, hoping for a diamond to come. Three. 
But the three is not a dangerous card for either one of them. Robert bets another 80,000. Let's see what Julian does here. I'm raising. He's going to raise here. He calls the 80,000. Confident on drawing a diamond. Well, he's not really confident. He's just making a play to find out where Robert is at. If Robert doesn't have a king or a pair, Robert would probably throw his hand away now. But he has he has the pair of jacks. Ball. I would, uh, yeah, he's going to call. He's just going to call. See, Robert doesn't know if Julian has a king. But he's not throwing away the pair of jacks right now. Queen of Hearts. All right. Check. What do you got? I think your king wins. What do you got? I got nine high. Now returns over two jacks. Well, Robert won the hand, Good. and Julian thought Robert had a pair of kings. We still don't know what Robert would have done if Julian would have put him to the test and put all his money in. Would Robert have been able to call with the jacks? That's something we're never going to know. Last night, while Robert was trying to qualify for this final table, his wife Olga told us about her husband's calmness under pressure. If my husband wins two million, um, we'll decide at that point what to do with the two million. I think we'll pay a lot of money in the taxes, and then we'll think about it. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> it has been seven and a half hours since the first cards were dealt and this World Series of Poker down to two. Although nine guys at the final table were newbies. Gabe, I'm curious on your take on the play so far. Well, I think the play has been amazingly aggressive before the flop, but not too aggressive after the flop. Uh, usually at the final table, World Series of Poker, you see some great bluffs, a few great calls. We haven't seen any of that. We've seen that aggressive play and we've seen a different kind of attitude. These nine new players are uh, much more demonstrative than players usually are at the final table. It's been kind of fun to watch. Robert has a uh, king-queen here, and he's raised. Uh, let's see how much. He's raising and making it $100,000. It's going to cost Julian $60,000 to call. He's got a jack-8 offsuit. Julian knows this could end, really, at any time. Oh, yeah. Julian calls. He's calling. And they each have $100,000 in this pot. Let's see if the flop helps anybody. This could be it. This could be the hand. Ace, eight, trade, three suits. Ace, three, eight. Julian's made a mm -hmm. pair of eights, and Robert's made nothing. Robert's first act. He's going to bet. $100,000. dollars Julian's got a pair of eights. Maybe he's thinking about, does Robert have an ace? Maybe he's thinking about all the cards that, oh, he, got, he throws it in. He throws his pair of eights away. He saw something that he thought Robert had a better hand. He was wrong. Well, Robert's been getting the cards all day. That's yeah. the only thing I can imagine Julian thinking. The 33rd Annual World Series of Poker is brought to you with pride by Benyon's Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas, where millions are played and legends are made. Welcome back to the granddaddy of all gaming spectacles, the World Series of Poker. They've been at it for seven and a half hours. Something has to give soon. On to hand 161 at the World Series of Poker finale. Julian Gardner, Robert Varconi, head to head. Varconi with a huge chip lead. Actually, about five to one. And Robert Varconi, uh, raise. Look at this. He's got his favorite hand again, <laughs> Queen Ten, and he's going to raise with it. He raises fifty thousand dollars. Julian Gardner has a pretty good hand. He has a jack eight of clubs, so I'm sure he's going to call. He was thinking about raising momentarily, but he calls. And 
let's see what the flop brings. Feeling in the room, really intense. Well, here we go again. He's uh, a queen, two fours, but two clubs. And Julian's now, already got two clubs. He's got a flush draw here, and Robert's got a pair of queens. Robert bets another $50,000. And it's Julian, remember the last time he had a flush draw, he didn't put Robert to the test. Let's see what he does now. All in. All in. Oh, he's going all in. He's playing this hand differently. <laughs> now, Robert's got a very tough call. He's got a queen with a 10 kicker. But this hand has been very cool. good to him. for the He calls. <laughs> so... This could be the end of Julian Gardner. Yes. Julian doesn't catch a club. This could be the end. Robert has Queen 10 off suit. The 10. 10 of diamonds. That makes Robert too fair, but that doesn't really matter because Julian can still win with a club. Unless it's the 10 of clubs. Then Julian would make a flush and Robert would have a full house. Look at this. It's the 10 o'clock. Oh my God, it's the 10 o'clock. Robert has made a full house and Julian has, has made a flush. Well, Julian had to think maybe he had the hand, but no, it was the 10, as you mentioned. And it is Robert Varconi, the amateur from Brooklyn, New York, who is the new World Series of Poker Champion 2002. What an amazing final hand. It's amazing that he won with the Queen 10. Queen 10 has been very good to him. He's won about four major hands in this tournament with the Queen 10, a hand that a lot of people wouldn't even play. And his wife, Olga, gives him the biggest prize of all. And Julian's got to feel good about where he ended up, a millionaire here at the World Series of Poker, his first time at the final table. Almost the youngest champion in the history of this event. He played very well, and he made the right move on that. You have to move all in, you cannot wait. To make a flush, you have to put the guy to the test, you put Robert to the test. We're here with our 2002 world champion of poker, Robert Varkonian, to give him the red jacket. We're not like the Masters Golf Tournament, we have a red jacket. To present it to him is the 2000 winner of the World Series of Poker, Chris Ferguson, along with Jack and Benny Bainan. They're going to present it to our new world champion of poker. Robert, which is going to be sweeter, winning the $2 million, winning that beautiful silver bracelet, or being able to shave Phil Helmuth's head? Shave Phil Helmuth's head. <laughs> there we go. All right. Congratulations to our new poker champion, Robert Valcone and his wife. Sit down, Phil. Phil, Phil is going to save his hair and try to sell it on the internet. Okay, Phil's hair is going. I've never had my head shaved before, so. Oh, God. I think. I think Phil is going to look very cute. Oh my God. Let's save the hair. <laughs> Robert, 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 you got to live up to it, I Robert. I think Phil has learned his lesson, and he's going to be a good boy from now on. Right, that Phil? Charity. This is for charity. Peggy's gonna help. 